Hello, buddy. Welcome back to another episode of Just What I Am Playing. What? Where I'm playing Final Fantasy XIV. And sorry, I just looked at chat and I was like, what is this? Uh, <laughs> anyway, last episode we uh, did some more MSQ. We also did the extreme version of the Leviathan fight. And in this episode, we're going to go and continue in our majestic adventures. Thank you for responding to my call with such haste. <laughs> Me hoping that it would be voice acting. Rest assured, I should not have summoned you were it not urgent. To business then, I have received some most disturbing news from the Order of the Twin Adder. They have reason to believe that the Sylphs may have called forth their revered guardian, the Primal Remu. I'm sorry, may have? Then it is not certain. The Elder Seeds here informs us that the Elementals themselves murmur of the Lord of Levin's return to the forest. The Sylphlands, however, display no signs of undue commotion. Uh, forgive me, Antecedent, but, the fa but that fact need not contradict the Elemental's testimony. Unlike his more bellicose compeers, Garuda and so on, Ramu is reputed to act only in the defense of his children. I imagine he would soon make his presence known, if any were foolish enough to directly endanger the Sylphs or their territory. The abruptions of this development concern me. concerns me. Are we not keeping a close watch on the Touched Ones and their movements? If preparations for a summoning ritual were indeed underway, it would surely not have escaped your notice. Oh, we didn't. I was pretty sure it was going to happen, just not this soon. I beg your pardon, you foresaw this eventuality and did not to prevent it? Now, I told Papa Limo I, I suppose I could have reported things to Mithidia earlier, but there honestly wasn't much we could do except wait and see. You know how the Sills feel, uh, feel about people poking around in their territory? They already summoned Ramu once right after the Calamity, but that was because the Guardians came trampling through the forest. And so long as Castum Orion stands, the Sylphs cannot be blamed for wishing to have their Guardian deity on hand. In short, Ida and I are in agreement. The actions of the Forest Folk were inevitable and unavoidable. And I maintain that observation would have remained the best policy had it not been for the sudden influx of strangers into the Black Shroud. That, alas, we did not foresee. By all accounts, the recent violence in Ulda drove a number of refugees to seek safety under the concealing canopy of the trees. Tis like that the Sylphs perceived this panicking migration as yet another invasion and quickened their efforts to summon their god. I am put in mind of Titan and the Kobolds. Once again, it is the affairs of men which have paved the way for a primal's coming. Indeed, one cannot help but wonder what manner of place Iorze would be without the civilized, or the civilizing influence of mankind. Be it as it may, this regrettable development does afford us a unique opportunity. When, through your dealings with the Sylphs of the Dolsals, you once succeeded in preventing an untimely conflict with Gudania. I wonder, might one who has treated with the Sylphs so fruitfully in the past not achieve a similar success with their patron deity? If Ramu can be convinced of our intentions, it may be the first step to breaking the cycle of primal summoning. A fond hope, were such a thing possible. We would not have been at war with the Beastmen since time immemorial. Or we have been, we have been, whatever. But maybe this time we can... Let us continue this discussion and on. We must first, we must needs first consult with the nation most affected by Ramu's presence. The other seats here has requested your personal involvement, Lin. Pray report to Commander Huyu, Huyu, Huyu <laughs> at the Azus Nest as soon as you are able. Steal yourself for the worst. While I hope for a peaceful resolution to this matter, experience suggests that your meeting with the Lord of Level Levin Level <laughs> Levin will prove less than amicable. In such an event, your fellow scions will of course lend what you whatever support we requ you require. I totally forgot to remove the chat block. Right. Men of the Science, your arrival has been most anticipated. 
The appearance of a primal is ever uh, is ever cause for uh, as ever cause for alarm and unease. Though my men stand ready for any eventuality, I know of none other, more, none more qualified than you to snuff out this threat. Indeed, I would have you do so without delay. The other sits here, however, would speak with you first. She is of the opinion that your diplomatic rather than martial skills may better serve our cause. I will leave further explanation to our learned leader. Pray make your way to Nofka's altar. The conjurer in attendance will admit you to the lowest stand. You know, the usual. Your signs have already arrived, madam. May I show you? Yes. Scions of the Seventh Dawn, on behalf of the people of Gridania, I bid you welcome. Your presence is of great comfort to us all in these days of uncertainty. I summoned you here to share tidings of a most urgent nature. But a short while ago, the great Elemental spoke, and his voice was clarion in its intensity. Ramu is returned unto the forest. Scarce had his words ceased to echo in mine ears when we were visited by an emissary from Little Solace. Our guest informs us that the Sylphs too have sensed the presence of the Lord of Levin. Though his exact whereabouts remain unknown, we may safely assume that the Primal was summoned within the heart of the Sylphlands. Unlike the other Primals you have encountered, Lord Ramu is no raging avatar of destruction. He is revered as much for his wisdom as his strength, serving as both arbiter and guardian to his children. Given that we and the Sylphs found a way to share the Twelve's Wood, it is my hope that this sagely immortal will be amenable to reason, and that conflict may be avoided. Blessed as you are with the power of the Echo, you are one of the few among us who may commune with a primal without fear of influence. I would ask, therefore, that you represent us in this most delicate of negotiations. The Twelve's Wood has suffered enough. Upon this, we and the Sylphs, and I would venture Lord Ramu himself, are in perfect accord. Let us not endanger our shared home by engaging in unnecessary hostilities. Dear friend, I beseech you, safeguard the peace which exists between our peoples. Not. <laughs> You have my thanks. Pray make for little solace, then. A member of the Order of the Twin Adder awaits you there. He will advise you on how to find the Lord of Levin. An ill wind blows through the forest. Yet... It is not only the Twelve's Wood that flinches at its coming. All the lands of Eorzea shiver in dread anticipation. Have care. Time to go and pollute the forest with my my bike. Hmm. Lynn of the Scions, I was told to expect you. I understand you go to treat with the Primal Ramu himself. An 
unenv un un unenviable task? Hmm. An un never. Hmm. An <laughs> unenviable un un never un task, but what <laughs> for? Um, one for which I have no doubt you are well suited. I have been told that your fellow scions are conducting an investigation of the areas you speak. That you might ascertain the location where the Lord of Leaven might be found, and where the Lord of whatever. I would ask that you abide here until they return with their findings. Leaven, or an impression. <laughs> ah! I was told that the messenger would be sent as soon as your fellow scions finish their investigation. I do not imagine it will be much longer. This one returns, uh, and returns with good tidings. Wise ones, uh, white ones have finished searching and have wisely identified the precise location where the touch ones summoned from Lord Remo. Your timing is impeccable, my fellow friends. Might you be so kind as to escort this good woman to her fellow science? If it be this one's pleasure, walking one, please, please come with this one. I still need to do my beast stripe stuff of today. How far am I even in this stuff? Almost halfway, or basically halfway with the emulsion. Hey, it's basically like two. That's basically like two days of doing all of their beast stripe quests. So I'll have to see how much I can do before I reach the end of a realm reborn. I'll probably take like another recording break and at some point. Wise ones have ventured deep, deep within the, within the self lands. These ones must proceed carefully and keep an keep an eye out for touched ones. Bum, bum, bum. This one is most sorry, but this one can go no further, draw too close to Lord Ramu, and this one may turn mean and nasty like touched ones. And so this one must stay for a while for now. Walking one will find wise one not far from here, to the south. Go in safety, walking one. Right. So it's actually you. I am relieved. For a moment, I thought we were dealing with another one of those confounded self tricksters. I swear with them wreaking havoc with their skin-changing ma uh, magics. It's a wonder I was able to finish taking my measurements. Yes, I was quite. Uh, it was quite the ordeal. You should have seen the look on your stolen face when the one impersonating you suddenly showed up. That's quite enough, Papa Limo. Ahem, my apologies. It is not like me to ramble, so. At any rate, as I was saying, I finished measuring etheric activity in the area, and I'm pleased to say I have reached an indisputable conclusion. To wit, that remove was called forth in the vicinity of the Sylph's Etherat. Come then, that Lord of Leaven awaits. Ah oh, yes, my Magitek Reaper will definitely not scare them off. Uh, where am I supposed to be? Am I just supposed to be here? Okay, yeah, just enter the area. Garuda and Leviathan. I am Ramu, guardian of the children of the forest. Thou tramplest upon sacred soil, bringer of light. By what right doth man intrude in this sanctuary of the sylphs? The Gridanians proffer peace? Their words are born of delusion. 
Thine offer, an insult. Thou speakest of harmony, yet carest not for my children's desires. They did but wish to dwell beneath these boughs in solitude. Yet even that was too much to ask of man. Thus did they turn to me for succor. The sentence I pronounce upon thy kind is just. Redanian or Gallian, it matters not. The good intent of one excuseth not the misdeeds of the other. Thy conflict have brought naught but anguish and misery unto the forest. All blame doth lie with the darkness that resideth in the breast of man. Whence sprung this calamitous seed? In the beginning no such duality existed. Were light and dark given form when man was born? It would explain much. Not least why strife and sorrow follow ever in thy wake. Thou canst not deny the urgings of thine own nature. Knowing that thy mere presence here portendeth tragedy, wilt thou persist in this pretense of peacemaking? Thou bearest the crystal which I bestowed upon my wayward charges. That they should entrust so precious a gift to thee. Thou standest apart from thy kin. Thou art the bringer of light, I. But there is something more in thee. Very well. I shall consider thy proposal. Shouldst thou survive my trial, if thou wouldst champion the cause of harmony, I must have proof that thou art fit to play the role. Whether mine eye, and prove to me thereby that thou hast strength enough to stay the darkness which threateneth to consume thee. Yet if thou shouldst be found wanting, know that all men shall perish in the storm of my judgment. Come to me, bringer of light. I shall await thee on the field of battle. Uriange, it is rare indeed to find you so far from a tome. The Lord of Levin himself. Never till this day had I looked upon his visage, save in painted renderings made faint by time. Ever shall this scene remain etched in my mind's eye. <clears throat> Beg pardon, my lady. I must beg thine aid on a point of research. If thou art resolved to face Lord Ramu, I would ask thy leave to observe the event. The striking tree, hard. Now accessible. <sighs> Alright, my friends, once again, I'm going to be queuing up for this, and I will see you guys in a hot minute. <laughs> Alright, I've prayed and I've returned. Time to fight ourselves, an old bearded man. At least I hope so.
This fight has some pretty interesting music. It's a pretty chill song. You may not think of it when you hear the first part, but... <laughs> The extreme version of this fight, which we'll be doing later in this episode, is quite something. <laughs> you know, just FYI, if you want to attempt the extreme version of this fight, it is quite something. Guess we'll see how beautiful, like what a beautiful mess that's going to be, huh? But let's first deal with the normal version. Should not be too difficult. Rabu. <laughs> Hello. So those AOEs will drop little balls over here. Which can give you a buff. If you grab three of them, it's going to lower the amount of damage you take. Which is kind of useful, but like in the normal version of this fight, it's not really that important. However, I'm not sure if this is also a thing in a normal fight already. But the um, the Thunderballs over here will increase removes damage. The more there are on the field, the more damage it's going to deal. Then we have Chaotic Strike, which will hit people with terror. You then have to zap them with lightning. Otherwise, they become confused. So this person over here, Slade, is now in terror. So he's frozen. He can't do anything. If I had an AoE, I would have zapped him, but yeah, I didn't. <laughs> but there we go. We have a dancer over here doing it. Aside from that, the occasional AoE like this, and then the tank gets hit with a tank buster, which has some AoE to it, so you should try to, you know, stay clear from the rest. Whenever you have this marker, it means that you're gonna get terror, basically. Which means that somebody will then have to zap you. Which, nobody did, and thus I'm just standing here. When these ads spawn, um, not sure about the normal version, because usually it's not that important, but... It would be a pretty good idea to focus them down, because they will charge up Ramu's um, ultimate damage, basically. Like every now and again, they do like increased sentence, which will increase the amount of damage that Ramu's big attack is going to do. He's also invincible right now, so there's really no point in attacking him. <laughs> Unless if you're the tank, if you're the main tank. Because then you can still get healing from your like single target. Uh, like from your rotation, depending on which tank you are playing. Paladin doesn't really benefit from it too much, but... Dark Knight and Gunbreaker and Warrior do. So... There we go. I only, should, I only just noticed that my attack things also show like what type of damage I do. That's intriguing. Didn't even think about that. Then when you get this debuff, which is Causality, the only way that you can remove that is by grabbing three orbs and giving yourself the lightning immunity, basically. The other thing that you can do is... Um, I'm sorry, the, on the other effect to this is, as long as you have this tether between you, you're going to take damage every single time that you use an action. Which is not a good time. <laughs> So you should probably grab three orbs, get that buff, and remove that shenanigans. Other than that, ooh, Chris. I was not paying attention, I was looking at other things. <laughs> I should have zapped our uh, tank over here, but that AoE also removes the debuff. The tank buster also removes the debuff, so... At least in the normal version, it is fine to let that happen. In the extreme version, this is not fine. 
Other than that, there's not much else to this normal version of the fight. I hope you managed to enjoy at least some of that song. Because <laughs> it is quite a nice little piece of music. I am O. Nice. I have taken thy measure, bringer of light. And I judge thee a worthy champion. The task of excising the sin that hath taken root in man's heart is thine. Shrink not from employing thy strength in service to the forest and the wider realm beyond. Like hungering shadows do the enemies of harmony gather, and meekness will but feed them. If man is to be delivered from the dark, it shall be by thy guiding light alone. Stray not from the path, for if thou dost, thy people shall be truly lost. Thou hast slain the Lord of Levin. A regrettable act, but a necessary one. In witnessing thy struggle, a truth hath been revealed unto me. If I mistake not, it may yet prove a chink in the eternal armor of the Asians. But let us conclude our present business. I shall expound upon my findings at the Rising Stones anon. Right, and then I was about to say that everybody just left. <laughs> Which they kind of did, yes. I'm stuck against a tree. <laughs> a usual day in Aorzea. Yeah. Lin, you have returned. So there I ask how Ramu received your visit. He challenged you to a test of arms. It is well done that you have some experience in such matters. The peoples of both Gardani and Rosales will be relieved to hear that the Lord of Levin has accepted you as the forest champion of peace. You have performed a monumental duty this day, Lin. The elder seats here must be informed of your deeds at once. The elder seats here will wish to hear of your experiences firsthand. Pray return to Gudania and make directly for the Lotus Stand. The Conjurer at Nofakus Altar will be expecting you. Fare you well, Lin. Somebody just yelling. Welcome back, Honored Sion. Me. Who knew of her, your mission? Have most have been most anxious to see you return. The other seats here awaits you within. Ba -da -ba. Gotta make sure that I don't step in the sacred water. You are returned to us, dear friend. And none the worse for bearing the heavy burden which I did press upon you. Most glad am I of this. I am informed that your efforts to negotiate a peace with Lord Ramu ended in conflict. Pray tell me, what befell? Dialogue. Speech. Ramu made trial of you? I fear there is truth to his claim. It is the darkness within us that attracts the darkness without. It cannot be denied that misfortune follows man. 
For evidence, one need only look to the conflict brewing in Cartanel, or to the rising flood of refugees. Our shared struggle against the Empire should have served to seal our union. Yet the ties which bind the Alliance strain under the weight of gross self-interest. As the scars of the Calamity begin to fade, so too does our sense of common purpose. Yet now is scarce the time to forget our shared responsibility. If this new-sprung realm is to survive beyond its infancy, it must needs be nurtured by all. Eorzea must be as one, yet I fear that dream is still far off. On behalf of the people of Gridania, and the Elementals both, I thank you for all that you and your fellow Scions have done. Full oft have I been compelled to look to you for aid of late, and offered all too little in return. As leader of this nation, I shall endeavor to prove a more worthy ally to your cause henceforth. Okay. <laughs> Lord Ramu has departed, yet the keening of this ill wind grows no less insistent. Voices of the forest, pray speak and I shall listen. What unseen evil begets this unease in my heart? No sense, another daunting mission, alien. I thought Blood Remo could be persuaded with words alone, but nonetheless, I can only admire the adro adroitness, or adroitness, whatever, with which you responded to the primal sudden challenge. And it seems that Urianje too was pleased with the outcome. But say, Yulin, shall we gather back at the Rising Stones and ponder the lessons of the day? Pray return to Rising Stones. The much more convenient to reach Rising Stones. Welcome back, Lin. Word of your word of your momentous encounter with Lord Ramu precedes you. I would fain share news of my own, but Urianje's discoveries must take precedence. Upon witnessing your defeat of the Lord of Levin, our learned companion was struck with a profound insight regarding the nature of the Ashen's immortality. Let us assemble and discuss his observations together. Yeah. That was a hiccup of agreement, Infidio. If everyone is ready, let us begin. Uriange, the floor is yours. She starts breakdancing. <laughs> as all here assembled now know, in its final hours as our order's headquarters, the Waking Sands did play host to a most unexpected visitor. I speak of the Asian clad in white, Elidibus. Unwelcome though his presence was, his words that day did serve to confirm a truth long suspected, that the Asians are eternal beings to whom physical destruction is as a temporary inconvenience. In the intervening time, Uriange and I have striven to discover a means by which the Asians might more permanently be slain. And tis my belief that we have found the thread that will allow us to unravel the twisted skein of their existence. In the moments prior to Leviathan's most recent manifestation, the Sahagin Elder who summoned him was observed to undergo some manner of ascension. The etheric readings taken by Yashtola at the time of this transfiguration have proven most enlightening. 
The disruption to the flow of ether was sudden and dramatic. So tangible was the agitation, I scarce had need of my goggles. The significance of Yashtola's readings might better be understood in the context of mine own, taken at the instant of the Lord of Levin's demise. Unlike the Primal, the Sahagin was not subject to etheric dissipation. Before discussing our new discoveries, it may benefit us all to recall what we know of etheric behavior. Welcome to space. Let us begin at what some might call the end. When we who dwell in the material realm die, our spirits dissolve into the flow of ether and are returned to the ethereal realm. In turn, the restless energy which suffuses that plane streams back into our world, giving rise to new life. Tis as the heavens did decree, the way of all mortal souls. Twixt this world and the next do the ethereal current swirl, bearing the very essence of life. Thus doth the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth continue unabated. Primals behave somewhat differently. In order to manifest and then maintain a physical presence in this realm, they must consume vast quantities of ether, most often in the form of crystals. Though they may seem to live, their flesh is but ether given shape. Thus, a defeated primal leaves behind no broken corpse. Rather, the essence of its form seeps back into the land whence it came, and the energy of its shattered spirit is called back to the ethereal realm. And there it waiteth, till next the prayers of the faithful do draw it forth from the sea of ether to take their offering of crystals and make for itself a new body. Which brings us on to the third group, the so-called immortals. They exist in a manner all their own. Quite. Even as the Sahagin Elder fell to the Admiral's musket shot, I witnessed the release of an ethereal cloud, which immediately took possession of a nearby minion. A soul that dissipateth not upon the death of the flesh. The secret of life everlasting. And in the claws of a Sahagin, no less. But I wonder, what would happen to one of these obstinate spirits, should there be no suitable host for it to claim? If mortal death entails a return to the ethereal realm, it seems doubtful that the soul of an immortal would venture there. Nay, it merely withdraweth the distance, unto the shore of the ethereal sea, perchance, but no further. Yes, it exists in neither this realm nor the next abiding instead in the space that lies between them. The Asians took control of Thancred by means of a crystal of darkness, an artifact which, if our theories are correct, serves as a gateway to the place I have just described. I was hoping people had forgotten about that. I am sorry, my friend. For a mercy, the weary road of our research hath brought us unto an answer. The Sahagan ascended to an immortal state, but he did not possess a crystal of darkness through which to flee this realm. Thus was he consumed by Leviathan. If we could entrap the spirits of defeated Asians in like manner, and thereby deny them resurrection... Therein lieth the path to victory. Thou art most perceptive, my lady. Only when we have trapped the bodiless soul within an ethereal prison can we hope to defeat its unnatural constancy. Thus might even an eternal paragon be consigned to oblivion. These feats are, of course, far easier said than done. At present, we lack a viable means to entrap and extinguish an Asian soul. Yet, I believe it to be possible. The pieces of the puzzle lie before us. 
We have but to put them together. I will depart at once to convene with the sages of Sharlian. Together shall we divine the steps by which our goals may be achieved. I have the utmost faith in you, Archon. Beg pardon, Antecedent, but I would raise one final matter. Even now, a Charlian survey party seeketh to ascertain the fate of the students of Baldessian. Their findings shall soon be known to us. Though you harbor feelings of dread, I bid you surrender not to sorrow, but abide instead in hopeful prayer. I shall, Archon. Thank you. The Lord of Levin is returned to the Aether, as was Leviathan before him. Ah, uh, Hermo's acquiescence was most intriguing. Inferno, Vortex, Crag, Horl, and Levin, all have now been humbled by the bringer of light. <laughs> Freaking cat, son of a... The limitless potential of man, Hydaelyn's servant, grows mightier by the day. Yet she uh, prospers at great cost to her mistress, whose strength is all too finite. Seven times of the masses survive the rejoining, but their souls are grown weak and wan. Wan? One? I don't know. Yet even as it enervates, the ardor empowers our master. All that remains is to nurture the strength of the gifted, to forge the final key. And that is a task to which we bend our every effort. Where's freaking cat? Oh. Divine seeds were ever wont to quicken in Eorzea's fertile soil. We need only lead men to the field, and by their eager hands shall a new deity arise. That which was shattered shall be made anew, and the one true god shall come again. It's interesting that like even in like the dialogue thing it's like all red that's pretty cool anyway um let's go not back to the uh no jesus i'm pressing all kinds of buttons but not the correct ones let's go back to vesper bay and unlock the striking tree hard yeah sure hard no extreme let's go and unlock the actual hard fight of her Well, I would like to say that, but apparently, <laughs> apparently I can't, which is really annoying because I just used up one of the very select Vesper Bay Easter Egg tickets I have. So, rip. I guess I first have to finish this patch, as they say it. Which is more than a little bit annoying. Oh well. So be it then. Now that now the matter from Mu has for the past been put to rest, there is something I would show you, Lin. It is a letter of thanks, signed by the leaders of the Aeorsian Alliance, acknowledging the Scion's tireless service to the realm. It mentions in particular the names of all the defeated Pymals, Ifrit, Titan, Garuda, Good King, Mogamark, the Twelfth, Leviathan, and now Remu. Needless to say, there is only one among our number to have faced them all. 
And though these words of gratitude were addressed to our order as a whole, I feel that they were meant that they were meant for you above all others. I too must offer my heartfelt thanks for all that you have done. In the course of your duties you have once again you have never once failed to answer my call to arms. You are a true hero, Lin, and Ayorgia is that much safer for your presence. Pray do not mis misunderstand me, I said safer, not safe. I know only too well that we can ill afford to lower our guard. The Asians may be relied upon to sow chaos in this realm until such time as they are forced to stop. Why, even without their encouragement, you may be assured that man would, fo would, would foment strife on his own. And that is to say nothing of the beast tribes, unless we learn to live in harmony. The primals, too, will return to plague us again and again and again. And yet, despite all of this, your deeds serve to inspire the people, to give them hope for a better tomorrow. And there's no greater gift. That we have the courage to strive for what might otherwise seem an impossible peace, we owe in no small part to the dangers you have faced on our behalf, and the people you have won over to our cause in so doing. Our list of enemies has ever been long, but think of the allies with whom we are now blessed. Of the sylphs of a little solace who wish not of conflict. Of Adizé, who strives to unearth the terrible secrets of the Calamity. And then there is Sid and the Fellowship of Noah racing to unlock the mysteries of ancient ally that we might be spared the horror of another Ultima weapon. By the way, like all of these things, usually unlock with patches and all that, so a couple of these stories might be like a little bit jumbled. Of course, when speaking of our greatest allies, we must not forget those closest to us, by which I mean our fellow Scions. Thanks to their many and varied talents, talents our order is uniquely equipped to combat to the far-reaching corruption of the Asians, and combat it we shall. Your enthusiasm is truly heartwarming, Antecedent, given our embarrassing wealth of allies. I trust it will not inconvenience you unduly if I absent myself for a time. Alfino, I take it the troubles in Ulda no longer require your attention. There are yet some rumblings of discontent, but the air of simmering violence is largely dissipated. Tis to report such that I stand before you now. That and to speak with you concerning the new organization we discussed. Ah, I have a message for you from Ella. Uh, ahem. You recall the refugee girl, the one whose parents were missing? They were found unharmed. She wished me to pass on her thanks to you. Why, Elfie, no. Am I to understand that you made the effort to remember the poor girl's name? I look forward to reading all about her in your report. I do hope you left nothing out. Lin, you have been away from Reverend Stoll for some time now. I believe might uh, I believe, sorry. Might I suggest you put the affairs of the realm to one side for the moment and take this opportunity to reacquaint acquaint acquaint <laughs> yourself with the town? Which reminds me, one of the Doman children recently inquired as to your whereabouts. Yours and was his name. I believe he has some small matter he wishes to share with you. Why not oblige him with a visit? Nod. Stoic nod. We will do that, my friends, in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode of just us playing Final Fantasy XIV. And the next episode, we are going to go and speak with Yozan. Yozan, man. Anyway, goodbye.